This is good. This would be a good like way to start, I think. Rudds, talk talk people through what you're doing that can't that, that <laughs> massacring a team of butter beans. Like, Alright, that's how you open butter beans. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Uh, like, like no better way to say it except hello and welcome to episode number 39 of the Fit Safe podcast brought to you by FFS Gyms. We are in the kitchen. Uh, there's a tin of be- uh, butter beans being very badly opened by Ruds. Uh, Epic Ru- fail, And sorry. we're joined by Sinead Delahunty from Delalicious uh, for the love of real food. Sinead, how are you doing? Great. It's um, nice to be here with you. Ruds, what the hell? Talk people through that. What was going on there? Hev- former heavyweight champion of the world, eh? Butter bean. Oh my, your jokes are so bad and they get way worse when there's food involved. Anyway, uh, Rudd, what are we doing? What, what are we at here? We are going to be showing people some food prep um, and just having a chat with Sinead about how to make delicious uh, delicious food for the week yeah. and uh, pick some new recipes up. And the thing is, we're going to be showing slash people that are listening, so this could get tricky. We're going to go between video and audio on this, so people who are listening on the podcast, don't get too angry for us referencing the people who will be watching this on YouTube. Uh, it's our first time doing this and it'll definitely get very messy. But anyway, Sinead, you, there's a lot of food here. Myself and Rhodes went to do the shopping. Yeah, you did. Um, fair play. I think we got most. We've missed one or two bits, but, but we got there at in the least end. I brought half the kitchen with me and you brought half, made you up brought for it, just your, in case. On your bike, you had a terrible UCD is it Camogie or GA or what, what was it yeah. oh come on it's our al- alma mater it's where we all started yeah well technically I started in Trinity and then left there pretty quickly so uh, uh, anyway um, right what have we got what's on the menu so yeah um, so basically I just said just like kind of what I would typically do like on a Sunday um, so that would be like you know prep for the week ahead make a couple of different things that can go in the freezer and do for lunch during the week um, or just to have straight away so we're going to be working through four recipes so we're going to time it and I think four recipes at the same time now yeah so yeah. it's a bit of a test to so see this, can that'd be a big thing for me is like being efficient when you're in the kitchen like try to get as much as you can done and use ingredients that you can kind of like use in a couple of different recipes so we're going to do um, my ginger and mint yellow curry which has been really popular I think Aoife was making it actually there the other day mm-hmm. and I'm going to add in some prawns to my dad he's the farmer and it's vegetarian he's like I think prawns would be really good in this so we're going to add that instead of beef but anyway yeah we're going to add them in and then we're going to make a loaf of my oat and seed loaf um, that just everyone like loves and you can't go wrong with it so that's a really good one to ha- like have made making your own bread you know what goes into it and you can freeze it and it just works a dream I nice. make it all the time and then we're going to make in some hummus with some carrots and then finally then we're going to make in carrot and I know Rhodes likes a bit of spice so we're going to have some chilies in making like um, a lentil soup with carrots and some chilli Unbelievable. Yeah. So carrots are kind of like the trend between all three apart from the bread. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. I can see Rudd's brain is working so hard to come up with some puns or no. drop no. some jokes. I, I, I'm just uh, contemplating that this will be a good challenge because my food prep would be a little different to this. Okay. okay. We'll talk about that more as we get yeah. going. I don't yeah. want to delay. Like, what, what's, what, come on, what's happening? What are we um, starting so with? So first of all, you know, you have to get like dressed for the kitchen. Um, I'm kind of normally either in my like old clothes, my pajamas or my hoodie or something, but I have aprons for you here. Okay. So just you can pop it on because you're not going to be sitting Thank there and resting. Much. Yeah. This is time to get working. Wow. And Rory here thinks like he's stuck, you can see him, he's stuck behind the laptop with the big speaker thinking like, you know, this is great. getting involved. Even, yeah. even and off. No, this is no. I'm working. I'm working hard here. So I think uh, this should fit. Okay, let's see. Your generous sizes. Extra medium. And what's this? Oh yeah. <laughs> just a little extra in there. Uh, so that's my cookbook. So it came out um, the 29th of April last year. So just sold out here. already. Uh, yeah, so I brought one in. So oh, beans. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. We're to the main recipe. Yeah. show you how to get out of the tin. Yeah, yeah. That should be food. It's not instructional. <laughs> uh, we'll get back to the book. Give us a look at the get the book up there again for the. For, where can where can people get the book? Because so nationwide, really all good bookshops, and then online as well. Um, either through my own website, delicious.com. Okay, so we're going to get going. Um, with carrots first, because I said that was kind of the theme through it all. Yeah. So we're going to roast some up. Um, with some nice spices for the hummus. So hummus, I love like to make. It's just great as um just a snack. You can freeze it. Put it like in a sandwich instead of butter or mayonnaise or anything like that. Like put it on the side of a salad. Like you just kind of can't go wrong. Like I think it's like yeah, pretty straightforward. Yep. And um, so I get you chopping some carrots. I'll make the carrots. Yeah. Yeah. So just top and tail. Don't need to peel them because like these are really clean. They're not exactly covered in mud or anything like yeah. that. 
Um, and then if you can cube them, that'd be brilliant. Be very careful, please, Rods. Yeah. And then while you're doing that, um, we're going to get, so always like when I'm in the kitchen, I always think about like, what, what's going to like take the longest amount of time. So we'll be roasting the carrots and then likewise we'll be making bread at the same time. So this like oat loaf is like really foolproof. Like it, once you have an oven that works, um, you can't go too far wrong. And Sinead, when you're doing like batch cooking, we try to get like pretty much all of our clients to get into batch cooking as much as possible. So yeah. we recommend myself and Rose, big fans of the Sunday evening. Um, for me, I try to make it like a bit of a ritual watching, watching sport. Um, so like watching golf on a Sunday. Um, big shout out to Tiger Woods winning the Masters the other day. Uh, I was, I was, eat, I actually cooked. This is the bad thing. Uh, I cooked a huge pasta for like three days, and my biggest problem is if I cook something really nice, I end up just overeating it. Yeah. And it's there all the time. So we'll talk about that. We'll go through some strategies with Rose. But but just on Tiger Woods, like as he said afterwards, one of his big thing was like the right training and the right food, like yeah. for to get him to that position. So yeah, yeah definitely. Like it is all of it like just preparation the type of food you're eating and if you can go towards just real food as much as possible yeah nice nice segue there so like what would you recommend would you batch cook once a week twice a week uh, like how long do you typically Reset. get out of Please. the um, so I probably it really kind of would depend on my week I suppose what, what's going on like I obviously play a lot of sport on top of going to the gym that kind of thing um, and then like you know everyone else I'm working full time as well as a physio so I, I'm as time poor as anyone but I would definitely try and batch cook once a week. Either like make bread like this or make a curry or something like that and like have a few portions in the freezer then for yeah. weeks that like, you know, you're just too busy, you don't have time in the kitchen or like you've been away for the weekend or just come back from holidays or something like that and you're kind of like, oh, I don't want to go shopping. You know, I just want something nice, quick and handy. So yeah, definitely would be about once a week I'd make like a curry or soup. Like in soup, like it's just foolproof like. Um, like the soup that we're making is just so so easy like it just make itself really like I think yeah and I see there's uh, in terms of like like we don't have anything overly fancy here it's all kind of stuff that would be in everyone's house with the yeah. exception to be fair of that handheld processor I don't have one of those yeah so, so yeah. they're like that's just like a stick blender I think I got in like Little Algae for like I don't know like 15 years or something yeah, very useful. it's just perfect yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. they can't stir all that oats for roads better than no, you roads you no, are in the zone yeah, with that stirring I think, I think we stirred it up yeah so literally <laughs> in that like old oak we had like just potty yogurt um, oats I put in some mixed seeds and then some red soil and then it's literally just a matter of tipping it all into yeah. your um, so what I'm always curious about this, um, like so many of the top five foods to eat, the five superfoods you aren't eating, all that kind of kick yeah. that's out there, right? Yeah. Like, what's the difference fundamentally here between the oat loaf and say a normal loaf of bread from uh, like a, a performance or a health point of view or a body composition point of view? Well, number one, by making it yourself, you're going to know what's in it. Um, and number two, then you know, oats is the base instead of flour, so nutritionally you're getting like a bit more um, of a better carbohydrate source, and oats then are a great source of like slow release carbohydrates, so it's perfect um, just for a longer release. And that's the thing, like with this bread, like it is more carbohydrate dense than because of, car of the oats in it, so just like a slice is enough, like you know, you, you might think oats oh, more, but like that is a portion, like you don't need. Eat half the loaf. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you feel you feel like adequately full like quite quickly. Um, and so that's like you're saying about like kind of portions and uh, overeating and that yeah. kind of thing. So what I do. That's the good knife for us. That's the good knife. <laughs> 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 so it's not like I'm hacking into the table, are you? So yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll just tell you have a good knife in your hands. It looks incredible. Like. It looks incredibly sharp and you're a Yeah, I just sharpened it. Alright, I'm it up. So, th like, with the loaf then, I would just, like, get a cool loaf of bait and um, then cut it into slices, literally, and pop them into the freezer. So, then you're more inclined to just take out a slice, like, go to work with your soup or, you know, for your breakfast or whatever. So, um, it's just a little bit easier, a bit more portion control that way. Like, yeah. It's not there, but you'll kind of be a little less inclined to go for round two. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing. It's like, um, a lot of people that. So they find you talk about being time poor people that find time being the issue yeah. you, just probably, you have to make it a ritual you have to make it a habit something that you enjoy like you obviously Rose you love cooking yeah. um, recent champion of local events cooking competition we like to bring that up every five or six episodes on the podcast yeah. so this have they been anti about doing any more sponsored content after winning the competition right now no 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 uh, I, I think I'm retired that one and done yeah uh, but no I, I love cooking and um, 
would, would me, my kind of approach be a little different to Sinead's in terms of I definitely do, I do it every Sunday, but I do like kind of one dish and tends to be a little less, a little less going on. Um, simple. But, it's simpler, but I think, uh, it, but that's another thing in terms of like, you can pitch it at the level you're at. So yeah. like, for instance, I coach a few people and they've never cooked before. Yeah. And coming in and starting at this is probably a bit intimidating. Just like in the gym, if you've never trained before, you're not going to start with the hardest session. No, yeah. You just start with something simple. So um, one thing, I, which is a good tip, is just if you don't cook, cook one new recipe a week. Set yourself a challenge, one new recipe a week. Yeah. And do that for 52 weeks. In 52 weeks time, you've got, you know, yeah, you've right, got sure. 52 new recipes, but as well, it's not overwhelming. And no, you can probably like, add the layers of progression and elements of difficulties you go along. And the other thing is, with that, like we know from when you're talking about habits, middle habits you're better off when you just said something that's like you know kind of bare minimum standard way like i'm going to do this and then chances are once you get started you end up doing more just by default mm-hmm. whereas if you're kind of like i can't cook don't cook then you never start and then you never you never do anything then whereas if you start small it's much easier to start building some momentum and some skills oh definitely and like that's like all i've learned to food is just literally help my mom in the kitchen at home um like and i think that's just a great way like to be able to encourage others to do as well like you know if you're sharing yeah. a house with people um but like that's i'd be kind of saying things as yourself like i'd encourage people like to start a breakfast like everyone can like make porridge in a microwave like it's yep. literally oats milk water whatever you want um into like the microwave the way you go or like you know, boil an egg or, you know, fry an egg, whatever you want to do. Like, that is cooking, but, like, you know, you wouldn't really classify it as a master chef cooking. And that's not something like that I'd be into either. Oh. Um, so, yeah, it's just definitely starting small, um, kind of staying in your comfort zones a little bit first, or finding, like, something that you really like, you know, if it's, like, your mom's bonnies or lasagna or something, and getting her to, like, show you how to make it and then recreating yeah. it yourself. But I think the thing as well like, about cooking is that like it's like like any skills you're saying like in the gym like you know you keep coming back you keep trying it's a bit, a bit of persistence um, and it does take like patience and you'd be making the same thing over and over again a couple of times yeah. and then you're like oh yeah I have this now now I'll move on to my like, recipe too or whatever. Another thing is like, like, following the recipes like is it you know kind of that, that one of the things that a lot of people say to me that I coach well I don't know how to cook or I can't cook but maybe like it takes a while till you're at your level where you're able to probably taste things and know oh, yeah. needs a little bit of extra that or you kind of start going off the fly a little bit but anyone can follow instructions it's like putting together ikea furniture in the regards of how, sorry, yeah exactly difficult to put together ikea furniture that's a terrible example to give but anyway we can no, get no, 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 right, fine building a lego house it's like building a lego yeah. house and if I you think follow the instructions you have a lego house it might not be the best one in the village but it'll be a lego house <laughs> it uh, no, I totally agree with you there. I think that's where people sometimes fall down in terms of recipes that they kind of like jump ahead right into it instead of maybe reading it and be like, okay, I need to do X, Y, and Z here um, first. Um, and like, or like just gather all the ingredients that they need, that kind of thing. So yeah. just uh, really like pair them right back, start really small, um, and then just get comfortable that way. And um, like what got like you were saying, you kind of helped your mom got you into cooking. Like to get to where you're at now, where you know you're you're actively like like demos, cookbooks, you know, like YouTube. You've got you're on social media, big press cooking. How how did that all come about? So yeah, I suppose back like so I was just playing kind of football. It's like got a permanent job and it's in about a year. And then um, my brother, I've like always been cooking, like that's just normal for me, we'll say, to be doing all that. And my older brother, um, Owen, just said to me one day, he was like, Oh, would you ever think of starting a food blog? And I was just like, like Well, first of all, I was like, I'm sure I'd be like, me when you open the gym, being like, I was like, Who's gonna read that? Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm sure the day you here, being like, Who's gonna come into the gym? You know, are we gonna have <laughs> Yeah, will we have members? Like, you know, will it just be everyone pre trial? You know, I was definitely one of them. If we build it, they will come. That's yeah, it. That's, that's so it. that's the thing, like, yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, he just kept on at me and I'm the ace of in my head, and then I eventually just to shut them up, like, just put up a recipe. And the first recipe was like granola, like, that was something I'd make all the time, like, and it's super easy. And it just went from there, like people just started reading it. And yeah, then like I was representing Ireland in a food bloggers competition 
um, when like the blog wasn't even like being owned and just took off from there. And then in terms of the book, just one day I came home to like a really nice email from publishing um, house asking would you be interested in having a cookbook? But I had to go kitchen and everything, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it's still uh, like, yeah, I don't, like, it's, you know, when I see the book, I'm kind of like, oh, is this actually happening? Like, you know, yeah. like, it's, it's all a bit bad. Yeah. And is, if you think, like, that sort of, like, industry is changing in terms of food blogging, like, you know, Joe Wicks, Neiman 15, you know, like, all the, the master class things at the minute, like, is it, you know, is everything on, is it, does it have to be done in 60 seconds now, or people not taking time to sit read a blog, read recipes, what, what's happening in that, that space? I think that like it's going obviously a lot like kind of everything at the moment towards video and say content. Yeah. But um like I would still get a huge amount of hits through just people looking at my recipes that I put up like um each week. Yeah. So it's totally mixed really. Yeah. I, I think, think like there's kind of something out there for everyone. And I think a lot of people that are kind of getting maybe a little bit tired of those kind of instant meals. Yeah. That they, they don't, they're, maybe like, you know, as I was saying, they started off doing that maybe, and now they actually are feeling a bit more comfortable in the kitchen yeah. and want to challenge themselves a little bit. But instead of being my brother, in terms of my brother, would have started off as simple something now, he cooks like really complicated Yeah. Stuff. And he's, he's just a show off though, he just yeah. does it for the sake of it. But he, but he, lo- he loves like putting aside two hours and like, Take on like one or two really complex recipes and just you it's know it, it, it challenges. He loves he loves nothing more than that. But two two three years ago that wasn't he would have started on yeah. all that stuff. So yeah, no, you definitely do see that progression. Um, and that's the thing. There's like there's something in terms of food out there for everyone. Like you know, you just probably haven't found it yet. That's like right because there. there's so much going on in the last couple of minutes. Uh, there's been a lot of chopping. Uh, What's happening now? We've got the, the oat loaf, which looks like it's coming up nicely in the oven. Yeah, it should be yeah. working on it over there. Um, yeah. So we've oat loaf in the oven, we've the carrots roasted as well, so I mix them in with some turmeric and some cumin for a nice bit of spice. Yeah, good. And then we have, so as we were saying, we're making a curry and a soup. So basically they have the same base, like onions and garlic are the base for most recipes. So we have them, they're getting a little bit warm. So half two more parts. I'm chopping half moons. Half moons. Half moons. Yeah. Half moon shape. So it's literally half moon. Yeah. No. That's kind of full moon. Half moon. So chopping a carrot into little circles and then cutting them in half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Half moons. Uh, Or like I would like cut it in half, like lengthwise, and then. Ah. Okay. Rod, who of the people that you know who you were talking about like cooking wise were quite reluctant at the start, uh, and they were saying just get into something, start cooking different recipes. Have you seen anybody come a really long way in terms of what they're doing with their food? Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, the, the one person I have in mind with that n- literally never cooked at all, and now they cook a lot. So, uh, and they kind of try, like, where, whereas before you kind of were giving them recipes, now they're trying things themselves. Um, so, no, I definitely have seen that. Um, the, the big thing about cooking themselves, obviously. It's confidence as well. Yeah. Like, you, once you yeah. start and you, you realize, like I said, it's kind of instruction based. I can do this yeah. and you see the benefits of it not only from a financial standpoint how much cheaper it is to cook your own meals yeah. like it's so much cheaper I actually genuinely this. couldn't get over this like I was expecting because we, like, we were shopping in there for maybe 10 obviously we were like two idiots walking around looking for half the stuff few sent us on a no tahini there is no tahini in the uh, little in our minds no. but um like I think it was twenty three ninety yeah. for everything that we have here, with the exception of just to be transparent, the tahini and the butter beans. So and the prawns. And oh, and the prawns. Uh, so you're talking like what? Thir- so that was that was twenty four quid plus the prawns. So you're talking about maybe thirty two euro for. And you'd have your lunch, would say in terms of soup. You'd have your you could have your dinner. You know, if you wanted to literally eat this for the week. Yeah. And you'd have your oat loaf as well, and you'd have a snack. So like literally, then if you had porridge in the morning, like you know, a bag of oats a euro probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's serious. I was, I was, I was genuinely like, surprised how that cheap it was. Yeah. Like my average shop, and like when I tell people that, they're like, "What? Yeah. Like, I ah, can't be doing that, you know." But like, but say if you're like, you know, herbs and spice, they're kind of like, you know, investing. That's the thing. Like, we've like, bought so many fresh, the fresh tubs of stuff there that like you'd have for, you know, you wouldn't exactly, have to buy those. Yeah. And like the top tip in terms of herbs and spices and tahini is as well to um, go to your local um, halal shop. Yeah. Um, because they are brilliant, and you'll get like. Like you literally could get enough rice for probably a whole year 
for like a family of six I'd say you know you obviously don't need mm. that amount but, but rugs might need it yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly but like you'll get like you know herbs and spices like in good quantities for like literally nothing like yeah. so they're just really good to um, Asian supermarkets or there's like yeah. an oriental place here around mine that's really yeah. good yeah like and they're just brilliant and like they they love to help people as well, like you know, or like try to say out. They'll be giving me like little recipe hints and tips about you know unusual ingredients and stuff. So they're yeah. they're really cool, like yeah. And right, so Rose, we're talking about barriers to cooking, right? Time, yep. uh, lack of confidence, yeah. Um, like how? So obviously, this is going to take us what? We're rolling for twenty five minutes here. Gonna, are we going to be eating soon? I'm getting pretty hungry. I'm here. slowing like, down the process as well. Yeah, Rose is okay. Like, like half one. one. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. So like you can find no, time. Enjoying my half ones. Like m- making it social. We I try to make cooking sort of like a social thing as I can. Like I, I buy and when I say that, I would like ring family maybe when I'm cooking. So yeah. I take this time if I'm sitting out to cook, I just have the phone on loudspeaker. I try do the rounds basically. Call yeah, call my yeah. parents. Call my granny. Call a few of the lads I haven't spoken to. Um, maybe find time to listen to a podcast or something. Um, something that's not looking at emails. Uh, it's a great way to clear your head, but like you're still you feel incredibly productive in that time. Oh, you're being really productive, yeah. And that's kind of like what I compare to. Like I suppose when I got really into this, it was like to yeah to get get time away from like playing football. Like because I think playing football, you can you know it can really absorb you. So this was like an escape kind of away from all that, and it was an escape away from physio and and like yeah as you're saying like i love uh, that when i'm playing sports in the gym like you don't have your phone in your hand yeah and you can't have your phone in your hand here it's like you're cutting your, well, you, you know could, but yeah <laughs> yeah but like you know so but definitely yeah i find that as a release like time away like it's brilliant and so it's just i think like i share a house with like three other girls and like we're always either cooking around the same time just you know tasting each other's stuff what are you doing there and mm. it's just really really good like and it just reminds me that i'm home like because that's all i would know from home like if everyone just be in the kitchen yeah like chipping in helping out and like you know you'll probably be sharing like maybe worries or that kind of thing or like you know some good news or just like yeah. having a crack like you know it runs i'm sure the terrible puns would be non-stop on the go yeah, but, but it, it, them all. it is interesting all roads because like over the years i think now things like deliveroo just eat like it, it's so easy to not cook yeah. not necessarily like to order we never we don't talk about like good foods and bad foods but it's very easy to not know what you're consuming Absolutely. um and just just to get things on the fly because you feel like you're moving or you know everyone's on the go so like that's that's a huge obstruction for people to cook at the minute is how e- how convenient it is to not cook absolutely no definitely um i think the the big thing is it's just if you're happy with that and that works for you then crack on because you can like you said you can still eat lots of healthy food and mm. so many like it's fantastic now so many restaurants give you options um and like and there are good like meat yeah. delivery companies yeah. out you know the like more bespoke ones they'll say you know that can give you good quality stuff there's so many of them but just i think the big barrier to that if you're always just eating out we're always doing it it's just financially it is a big big burden on someone to continue to do that i mm. know for me it's between seven and 12 euro really to get a feed uh, like for a lunch yeah uh, and then I probably I well, I know I eat more than the average person so I'm probably looking at 16 quid every lunch whereas you know as we discussed you can cook a lot more than that for a lot less than that um, and then the other thing is maybe there's people out there and they say oh, I want to improve my health I want to improve my body composition I want to have more energy at the end of the day if you cook more your own foods as Sinead said you get less things that are in it that aren't supposed to be in it or aren't yeah. added to it you get more nutrient density for that. You tend to be able to use a higher quality of meat for because you know because of the price and a lot of places are trying to make money as well. So you get like a huge amount of benefits from that. So if you're someone who wants to improve your health, improve the way you feel, improve your body composition, cooking more of your own food is going to do that. You're going to get less wasted calories. You're going to get more bang for your buck. You're going to get more nutrient density. Um, and if you want someone who wants to save money and be a little bit more cost effective you're going to save an awful lot cooking some more your own food and again i think it's like an all not an all or nothing mindset as well you can picture the level you're at like Sinead said you you could choose to your lifestyle might work for you that it works for you to get your lunches yeah but maybe if you just start cooking your breakfast the night before like so i always do it like five minutes the night before and then that's going to save you your breakfast and then you cook your dinner when you come home or you cook your dinner on the weekends and that's in the fridge and you come back straight away you've saved a ton you've saved you saved a ton of money like that and then yeah. you can still have your 
because you enjoy you just enjoy the freedom like the meal out. of the, yeah. the meal out and the, I, I it's having that mix definitely is so, so important yeah as well a lot of people I know from speaking to a lot of people we talked about it on a podcast recently where we were talking about um people having to eat out an awful lot with clients like entertaining mm. and work and all that kind of thing and just being on, being on the road and traveling a lot like it can be difficult it's not like there's some people who are traveling weekends they get like you know they're, they're pretty much non-stop traveling yeah. or out with clients um and what i find a lot of those people that we train say is it's that constant like very rich food uh, even they're trying to make the best choices mm-hmm. possible it like, doesn't agree with their system so like it's nice as nice as it can be to eat out in a lovely restaurant it can oftentimes just not agree with people's systems eating out all the time even though you feel like you're making better choices and um, so it's kind of knowing that when you're eating food that you're preparing yourself most and you know what's in it you know if it's going to be good for you or not in terms of aligned with your goals and then there's also that treat element like you we talked about like yeah, not absolutely. not treating yourself but it can be an occasion when you go out and it, there's a there's a different feeling yeah you enjoy about, it a lot more then, yeah so you, you might look forward to it because it, it's more it, it's a bit it's more rare you know it's like yeah. okay this is kind of cool i'm going to this nice restaurant you it, appreciate it, it. Yeah, yeah that's it it just changes the scenery for a lot of people i find and yeah. as well i think like by cooking yourself you actually appreciate what goes on in the kitchen as well mm. and like I'm, I'm, i have to say i'm that. very much appreciating the work that you're both <laughs> you're both doing a good tip with like picking up habits and starting new things is to gamify it so whether it be in the gym, say for instance, you make it where you go and you go with someone else and you have a little bit of a competition. Is, is that a word? Gamify? Gamify. Yeah. Oh, I like word. it. Yeah. And see, you go to the gym and you have a competition that makes you more likely to train or you do a partner workout in the gym, whatever it might be, mm. and that makes it more fun. You can do the same with cooking, like you're saying with your people you live with, where you might take turns where you cook one night, yeah. I cook one night, you cook one night, and it gets a little bit of friendly competition mm. who's cooking the best stuff. And you know, a bit yeah, of banter about work, that. Yeah, or in work, like same kind of thing. Like you know, you could bring it lunches and yeah. share them, and yeah, or do each come other. down with me. Yeah, exactly. Why, like you know, why not do like uh, set up with a couple of your mates where you do one weekend and you do the come down with me between mates. Like that's actually great crack to do. Um, and so like there's, there's a social element to yeah, that. Yeah. You know, it's like like you know, it's more about crack then. You know, it's, yeah, it's the occasion. Good little side story here. While there's some lentils being stirred up there, Mike's out. Uh, Operation director at the gym, uh, all around nice guy, uh, and Craig, who's my brother and on podcast previously, very nearly killed each other once upon a time because Craig cooked a dinner for Mike. Uh, I believe it was some baked salmon fillets. Uh, can you remember the story with some lovely herb potatoes and a like garden salad? It was like pretty yeah, good now. I, good. I, yeah. came, I came up from rugby training. Uh, myself and Mike came back when we were playing in Bective years ago, and I was disgusted. I wasn't involved in this kind of thing. So the deal was that Mike was going to cook for Craig the next day. So uh, we get home and Craig is like, long day at work, dude, looking forward to a nice meal, rocks home. Not a word of a lie, Mike South had cooked fish fingers, what? beans, and like smash mashed potato that you like microwave from Tesco. Oh and Craig, who was like, like, you know, like Craig was starting to get head. into like pretty, pretty, you know, getting into his fitness even more back then. Uh, you know, put all that effort into detail. You're talking burnt to a crisp fish fingers, beans, and microwavable mash from Tesco. So if you want to come down with me, don't, don't. invite him at any stage. It should be a complete waste of your time. Or if you want to win, invite Mike Sapp. That's true. <laughs> low yeah. bar. Yeah, yeah, set the bar low. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Mike's away in his honeymoon Eliminate at the minute. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but there's a lot of things like with, with cooking competitions and stuff. I know like there's so many people in the gym at the minute that are bringing in, um, this isn't a shameless plug for more free food to be dropped into us, but there's so many people that are dropping in, like baking seems to be so popular now. Yeah, um, and that's like where I would have like started off like baking just, like I, I mean, like I saw like chocolate chip cookies in like, I think I was in like her class something to all my classmates for like a week or two. Very entrepreneurial. Yeah, but like obviously like the profit margins just didn't add up like so like, <laughs> and I'd say like my mom was kind of like, will you stop doing this like wreck in the kitchen? Um, but yeah, like it's just, yeah, like baking is great to start with. And like that's thing, there's so many different types of styles of baking out there now I suppose like you know there's something there if you're a vegan you know if you're want more lower sugar options that kind of thing there there is something for everyone and yeah. like yeah I think like that, that I suppose there's a bit more of a science towards baking so you definitely have to like follow the recipe there like but it's yeah. great like you can get so creative with it yeah like really I, I never I that's why that's the only reason I don't like baking is I never follow recipes um like I'd start with a rough recipe and then just kind of be like right this is this is the way i want to do it or you know i'll, yeah. I'll forget yeah. and like something oh, cooks a little bit too long yeah 
Um, but like with bacon at the minute. I find, and Rudds, you'll kind of, let's kind of, we don't want to tiptoe around this, we'll be pretty honest with you. Like a lot of people are baking stuff that is not necessarily better for them than, so like I, for example, playing golf recently, a guy gives me like a homemade, uh, like a homemade chocolate bar. So I'm yeah. eating this thing, like, oh yeah, it's great, like, you know, my wife made it for me, blah, blah, what's in it? And he goes through what's in it, and he's like talking about how healthy it is, and I'm like, mate, you should just have a Snickers or a Mars bar. If you want a bar of chocolate that much now, if, if she enjoys baking it for him, that's great, but he, yeah. he thinks it's healthy for him. And I'm like, there's probably... So you might have two or three of them, maybe. Yeah, like, there's, yeah. More, there's more calories in this than there is in a Mars bar. So like, what, like, have a Mars, if you want it, like, have the Mars bar. But, um, like, do you do see, see that much roads people are, like, the effort is great and people yeah. know what's going into them. That's the big plus, so you know what's going into them. But like, is there any, is there misconceptions about like what, what sort of like better than the yeah next? I, I think as well it goes back to that thing of like labeling the food good or bad or healthy mm. or unhealthy yeah. and then yeah. just being aware of there's there's more to it than that um but the thing i'd say with that is that is always going to be better for you health wise in the regards of it's going to be more nutrient dense less processed than a mars bar so in terms of health then it's still you know it's still achieving the goal there even, when, even though the potential makeup is the same calories carb sugars because of the lack of the processing, processing yeah. and, and and just the what tends to happen is people tend to replace the like pure sugar with like honey or something where yeah, it's yeah. more it's got more benefits nutrient density wise but it still does the same thing to your body so what yeah. happens a lot is people are eating these kind of homemade bars and bites but uh, one of their goals for doing it is not is partly the health partly the enjoyment of doing it but partly they want to lose body fat and then that's where they come a cropper the reason being is as you said at the end of the day sugar is still sugar so 40 grams of carbs whether it's from the 40 grams of carbs from the mars bar obviously i don't know the exact number for a mars bar but say it's 40 from that or 40 from the homemade chocolate bar and they've still got a similar amount of sugar it's going to do the same thing to yeah. your body really uh, and the thing is with that as well sometimes especially people who are less mindful of what they're eating is oh this is healthy this is homemade this is good and then what happens is it's almost a license to overeat that so yeah. instead of stopping at one mars bar they'd eat two or three of those because oh this is healthy this is a healthy treat so i definitely would see that a lot and i think with that the best way to get around that is again just kind of reframing how you're looking at food and just thinking food is just food there's only better choices and also knowing the fact that if it's really sweet there's probably a load of these different like say for instance natural sugars in it still be aware that those natural sugars are going to do a similar thing to your body in terms of body content and, and in terms of calories in terms of fats even those healthier fats so knowing at the end of the day with regards to energy balance if there's 400 calories in it it's still something to be mindful of and yeah. factor into the rest of your day and then the other thing is like you said is not necessarily overeating it just because you made it yourself doesn't yeah. give you free license if you want to lose body fat to eat a lot of it past the point of being hungry and yeah. um, they'd be kind of things i definitely see and then i think as well with that you can kind of be smart with the types of recipes you cook and um, if if your goal was to lose body fat you just got to look at the ingredients most recipes give you the macro breakdown as well and you can kind of compare and go between these three chocolate granola bars this one's got the least amount of sugar in it. This one's got the least amount of calories in it. Yeah. That's going to be the recipe I'll cook because my goal is that. Or if you're an inter-county footballer, like Sinead's saying, your energy requirements are really high, then probably the bar you suggested is the perfect thing for yeah. them because the reason they'd be eating it is because they're not getting enough calories in as it is and they need yeah. to bump up their calories so for that person it's the perfect bar and i think that that's it it's the understanding it's understanding and experimentation yeah. a little bit with these things but like uh, i just see that's kind of a good example of like even that guy who's given me the slice of the bar yeah he, he doesn't know what's in it I, his wife most likely does and she's yeah. just baking it from as a snack but he's mm. coming with the angle of oh this is homemade it's yeah. very healthy whereas if i ask her what's in it she's probably be like no this is like this is full of sugar or whatever it is yeah so it's that kind of concept of experimenting yourself and knowing what's in it, it's going to make a big difference, I think. And you'll know then, like, as you're saying, like the flavor, like, you know, if it's yeah. like probably after a while, then if you've less sugary things, like when you go back, have something sugary, yeah. you're like, whoa, this is way too sweet. But by, by the way, don't be afraid to keep anything sweet that's coming in to anyone who's listening, members in the gym. There was something <laughs> dropped in this morning in that little oh? Tupperware box. Oh? I don't know what was in it. It was like, uh, a, yeah. was that it was? Anna, thank you very much. It was superb, yeah. One, one thing with the homemade breads, uh, so like, obviously, 
we try and tell people to, if possible, try and eat balanced meals as often as possible. The reason being is you cover off more bases of things. What do you mean by balanced? For so protein, that. fats, carbohydrates, colorful fruits and vegetables in a meal. Yeah. Um, and you cover off more of your bases in terms of giving your body what it needs. But also the other thing with that is you lower the glycemic load of a food. So glycemic load is just basically the, the amount of time your body takes to get the sugars out to so something that's highly processed. Um, tends to give you a sugar spike and you come back down. So by lowering the glycemic load of the food, it takes longer to get the energy out so that that steady release of energy that you said she mm, made. Yeah. So sometimes when people make homemade breads, what can happen is they just eat a couple of slices of that with uh, a bit of butter or a bit of jam. They just eat that. A good tip I found with that is try and make it a more balanced meal. So you could spread on, so butter could be the fat, but also the thing I like is nut butter. Nut butter yeah. Spread yeah. on nut butter. Avocado. And then avocado, these things, and you, you combine some fats with those homemade breads, and you tend to eat less of the bread, so you get healthy fats in as well. Yeah, but also yeah, you're creating it, a balanced meal then as well. It tends to fill you up more, the, the healthy fats and that. Or even just simple things like to add a little bit of fruit to it is uh, the homemade bread tablespoon of nut butter on it spread it over and then chop up half a banana and then have that on and then that kind of that snack's gonna easily keep you going yeah like covering two of the three off yeah um and and also you're gonna feel way more satisfied in terms of feelings of fullness after that meal whereas what can tend to happen especially when you baked it like you said with your dinner you make it you eat a little bit of it and you're like that's probably enough but then you're like that was so tasty oh, uh, and I, I worked so hard on it I'm yeah, 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 yeah. whereas if you have it it's when, mine I made it I deserve or it just if, even off the you know the square the cut yeah. you know that's yeah. a big thing yeah. about, like, you know, big yeah. fan of that yeah <laughs> so, so even even with that once like when, if you can kind of set it up where you set yourself up where your body's telling you I've actually I'm actually pretty satisfied it's much easier to portion control yeah. with that instead of just kind of really going hard at the bread. What is going on here? Firstly, my taste buds are tingling because the smell is getting so better and smell? better. So what can we smell? What can we smell? Well, I've not smelled the lemon that you're waving at me and cooking. I'm definitely there's the onions are getting there's a bit of whack yeah. in the pot there. So those potatoes smell incredible. Or the carrots, carrots, carrots they smell so good. Uh, so bit yeah, of curry, the soup and the curry are coming along. Lovely. Found some cumin, I believe. There, that's getting what's in that little jar there. That's turmeric. Do we have it? Turmeric, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So that went into our curry along with some fresh ginger and mint. Yeah. And then our carrots and courgette and then our base with onions and garlic. And then into our soup then went our lentils and they're plumping up lovely. And then our fresh chilli and then some chilli. Well. Okay, nice. So yeah, we added in the fresh chilli for our broads because I know he likes spice. He does like spice. Um, and then yeah, our bread is just nearly done. I'd say it just need another two minutes. Okay. And then the carrots roasted lovely, got a little bit of char in them as well, a bit of more flavour. Nice. And then just some oil, garlic, and then chickpeas, and then we're going to put in some tahini. And then I love to put in a little bit of parmesan into... I'm sorry for laughing here. Rudd's is delighted with tahini. Rudd's, uh, what did you think tahini was, Rudd's, when we sent you to the shop I together? thought it was like a Greek yoghurt-based condiment are these parmesan and garlic uh, so i love to add a little bit of parmesan into my hummuses even if you're just doing a plain hummus that's for the hummus okay wow so you can put like literally for hummus like you know just for a plain if you didn't want to roast the carrots but i think roasting veg is a great way to like if things are looking a bit dodge in your um in your veg basket like they're looking yeah. really sad and they're probably are and might be a bit moldy i bet you if you just peel them like it's perfectly fine underneath yeah. you might have to chop off a few bad bits but like you'll be grand um and like that's where penicillin came up came from so like you know it'll be fine no Drop harm so yeah for the plain it. variety i just would leave out the carrots and then just add in some cumin and a little bit of parmesan and then the tahini so tahini is um so it's basically like nut butter but it's just made out of sesame seeds okay so it's just ground up and don't try and make your own because i've done that and just burnt out a blender just buy it it's much easier okay to buy it. yeah so um two tablespoons of that it'll be lovely there the thing I love about these recipes is a, a, a term that myself and Sarah have coined. Uh, yeah. They're, they're full of hidden vegetables. Yes. So that, that can be good in terms of if you're someone who struggles to get to your vegetables with each meal, by doing something interesting like this with your vegetables, you get loads of vegetables mm. without uh, even without knowing. I'm actually shocked how many carrots are in there. I, 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 I thought yeah, and you could yeah. even put more. Like, Bro, it's only two. That's enough. Oh, right? yeah. That's loads of tahini, yeah. 
I am just giving a mix. It's not there. peanut butter or else you can't. Oh my god, that looks but, so um, good. I would use tahini like um, peanut butter though. Like I would push on bread and. Really? Uh, peanut rayu. Peanut rayu. That Divine. is apparently all yeah. the buzz right now. So why can I have some in the jar there? It's not mine. Um, I have created one and it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I would. And they have a cashew crunch out now as well, which is gorgeous as well. People um, go nuts that night. It would, yeah. Um, oh my god. So I say that's fine here. And then if you want to blend it. Yeah. This is the worst podcast ever. Rudd's is joke, like, as much as it's difficult and there's a lot of background noise, he's, Rudd's is just making as much noise as he can here. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. That's drum roll. Right, well, how far away are we? What's the ETA on Channel Down? Yeah, no, we're just going to be good. Yeah, yeah, so we can pop in our prawns and our butter beans. Get those prawns in there. Right, so before we kind of sit down and get stuck into eating, um, a bit of a recap, a lot going on there. But best advice, Rudd's, for people who are looking to get into cooking, feeling like a few barriers in a nutshell? So one recipe a week, start with that, start small, and make it a routine. So same night every week to start with. And Sinead's suggestion of just start with breakfast, great idea. It takes five minutes to scramble some eggs, cook some vegetables, chop it in, vegetables and eggs, uh, overnight oats. There's so many recipes. And the other thing is start taking the power into your hands. Don't wait for someone. So there's YouTube, Google, there's so many recipes where you can go on and Google and start with a recipe. That would be another big thing. Just take control, take there's, ownership. There's also a Delalicious cookbook. Delalicious Great cookbook. Just, cookbook you know, just get out of Believe it or not, we weren't planning on plugging this repeatedly, but uh, yeah. I'm glad we are. But yeah. the thing on top of that as well, as you were saying, is like picking like a day, and I would like literally put it in your um, diary. Like I would put in my diary, like like I obviously put it in my diary when I not in work, I'd say, but yeah. um, like, you know, when I have events coming up or like going to the gym, uh, so I won't get black. Uh, take it against my name uh, if I don't turn up and um, yeah and like I'd likewise put in like you know okay I'm gonna have time there I'll make whatever I'm gonna make yeah you know and then you kind of know you've boxed it off you're like oh yeah you know you're kind of in control of the situation and is the max you set aside an hour is, is that enough to do, to do yeah but even like I think just even like half an hour just even think like okay what's my week looking like Cause yeah. if you're saying like you're going out with clients and you'd be like okay so you know i'm going to be eating out that night and again to prevent like food waste yeah so that'd be a big like bug where am i um so then you know okay instead of going to the supermarket and buying what you normally buy you might just need you know just one or two little things like to make a salad out of or just a bit of fresh meat like yeah and you can always freeze that like if you don't use it that's something so. i've been very guilty of in the past is just cooking like huge batches because it makes to be honest with you, it sort of makes me feel better and feels like i'm sticking along with my goals it's okay i've got my food prepped it's just that kind of psychological step yeah but not thinking ahead to go actually i'm away this weekend or i'm down into kenny or whatever it might be and food goes to waste and it's just it's so annoying to waste yeah, food it's sinful life. yeah one suggestion if you're really time poor would be tray bakes so if you're really time poor, just getting a load of root vegetables, loads of vegetables, chop them all up, chuck in yeah, some meat, chicken toast, something like that. Ch- yeah. chuck in some spices, lash it all in the oven, take you like 15 minutes, 10 minutes to prep that, put it in the oven for 30, 40 minutes. Uh, and while you're doing that, you can sit down, emails, plan your week. So like in an hour, if you're really time poor, you could have your lunches made, you could have boxed off your plan for the week, like you're saying, yeah. and you could bang off some important emails. So then on the Sunday with that hour, you, if you're really time poor, you you know you're so productive in that hour. And even probably maybe spend a bit of time with like you know whoever Family is in your life, yeah, yeah, yeah. That maybe like you're not you know just focusing on them a little bit and just having maybe the chats that you know you haven't been able to have along the way. Yeah, and I think that's good with kids as well. Like if I was the same when I was growing up. My mum always cooked and was always in the kitchen cooking. She always loved it, and that transmitted yeah. to me yeah. and my brother and my sister. Uh, and we, we kind of picked up habits without even trying. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so just I think, I that, think that's a, that's a major thing right now. Because we're even seeing it with guys who've got... Um, guys and girls who've got kids now that are kind of maybe like four, five, six, seven, eight. And like they're talking about how it's just so easy that like convenience to eat out all the time. That like, you know, you have to wonder like... I've, my mother would have cooked the whole time growing up. Had us cooking from a young age. Like we were cooking lasagnas and spaghetti bolognese. Like learning how to cook these things. Yeah. Um, so when I went to college, it was it was never a difficult thing to cook. Or so we we live, I lived with a few guys who you both know in college in college, and they just couldn't cook. They didn't know. They were like, "What are you doing there? What the, how the yeah. hell are you doing that?" Yeah. And you're and then you're shocked by a lot. Of, a lot and that's kind of what like oh, what exactly I was in the same boat as you. And that's I suppose I was like, oh maybe actually yeah, there is a market for like how I cook and how I manage to fit it all in. Like you know, yeah. so it is doable. It's just 
putting aside a bit of time and like as you're saying just gaining confidence starting small and going from there enjoying it as well so mm. like if you enjoy it you're going to come back and you're going to do it more have fun with it don't put it too much pressure on yourself don't expect it to be perfect the first time you cook it yeah, and, that's the, and, and yeah. then for you as as parents then by you cooking and you enjoying it like that rubs off your kids pick all that up and they want to oh this is fun I want to do this yeah Um. you know I think it's a win win if you can just you know oh no it's brilliant even it. for me when I was travelling um, like you know staying in loads of hostels and like you didn't have money maybe to eat out in some countries they were quite expensive but like you just made friends and like you know bumped into people in the kitchen and like yeah. learned different cultural elements you yeah. know the way people would put food together so it's just so social like and it's just such a great skill to have yeah unbelievable Sinead thanks so much for coming You're and welcome. cooking for us uh, Rods uh, have you enjoyed your evening are you looking forward to chowing down I have I've learned a lot and I'm ready for the main event as soon as that blender Excellent. goes I'm going to have to are you going to trust him with that is yeah. he going to do this in my kitchen is I it no no once you just <laughs> point it down point it down <laughs> Rods I'm not going to do it while we're recording well it could be the nice segue oh. to end the episode oh. well, how, nice. did you time how long it took to do all that we're rolling for 51 minutes it's good. You know, yeah. and we're ready to eat yeah yeah yeah. Go for it. Let's go. <laughs>